Hello, I'm Mr. Boscherini and today we're going to talk about volcanoes. So, what's a volcano? From the point of view of geology, a volcano is any crack on the surface of the Earth's crust from which molten rock, also known as magma, can come out. Now here you have a representation of your typical volcano. You have a magma chamber, which is the main supply of our volcano, a pipe through which the lava, the magma actually, can reach the surface, a crater, and sometimes you can also have um, uh, a sideways exit for the lava, so like an event. And out of the crater you have your main uh, uh, lava flow, you have an ash cloud, you can have pyroclasts, that means um, actually rocks which are ejected out of the crater. And what is important that uh, the, the mountain itself is built upon the um, ejecta of, of a volcano. So it builds up over the millennia from all the lava which has come out and solidified along the side of a mountain. Part of it is due to the pressure of the, under, of the underground magma chamber, but most of the uh, size of a volcanic mountain is due to the solidified lava. There are several types of volcanoes and here are the three main ones. Uh, one of them, which is a bit um, less, a bit more obscure, is what we call the fissure vent. And basically it's a linear crack on the surface from which you have your uh, output of lava. And this is a very common um, feature that you can find in places like Iceland. This is a kind of, uh, of um, crack on the surface of the Earth's crust that normally uh, you wouldn't associate to volcanoes, but this is still a type of volcano because remember our definition, a volcano is a crack on the Earth's crust from which you have molten rock coming out. Then you have um, shield volcanoes. Now shield volcanoes are um, a typical feature of the Hawaiian volcanoes. These are volcanoes which form when the lava in, is extremely fluid, so it can run for uh, even for miles without solidifying and the resulting shape is like an old warrior's shield, so it's very flat and large. Your typical volcano is what we call a stratovolcano, uh, for instance like Mount Vesuvius in Italy. In this case the lava uh, is not as fluid as in the case of shield volcanoes and what happens, um, stratovolcanoes they build up uh, eruption after eruption in a typical conical shape and they tend to have a um, steeper side, so they tend to be more to tend, uh, they tend to be more tall than wide. So the difference in these two shapes is really given by the type of lava, and the type of lava is given really by its chemical composition, namely the amount of silica inside the lava. According to the type of activity, uh, you can classify volcanoes in three main groups. Active volcanoes. Um, active volcanoes are not necessarily volcanoes which are erupting right now. Um, uh, the greatest agreement among geologists is that we can call active a volcano which has erupted more or less in the last 10,000 years. And why 10,000 years? Because that's the beginning of recorded history. So ever since humans have started to record events in a written form, if they have recorded an eruption of a specific volcano, then we we'll say that that volcano is active. A, a typical example is Mount Vesuvius, whose last eruption was in 1944, but it's still considered an active volcano, even if it's not erupting right now. 
a dormant volcano is a volcano which in principle can erupt at any time but it never did as long as has been some civilization. So there's no historical record of an eruption of that volcano, but that doesn't mean it will not erupt. This is because of a different time frame of geology and human civilization. Uh, geology works over the hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years. That's a normal time scale even for volcanoes. So for instance, the island of Vulcano in Italy has a dormant volcano. So a volcano that we know can erupt, but never did as long as it had been recorded history. Finally, um, we have extinct volcanoes. Volcanoes that, as far as we know, are very unlikely to erupt ever again mainly because they have no more magma supply. They don't have any more molten rock underground that could uh, supply an eruption. And many extinct volcanoes have been filled by water over the ages and become uh, volcanic lakes, like the Lake of Bracciano in central Italy. Now, where can you find volcanoes? Um, the distribution of volcanoes, uh, which is also this, more or less the same as the distribution of earthquakes along the globe, is not random. Actually, you can see a very clear pattern of where volcanoes is. If you um, overlap this map of a world, you can see you know, North and South America, Greenland, Europe, Africa and Asia, split in half and Australia, you will see that the distribution of volcanoes, so the main ones are these red dots, are usually along what we call plate boundaries, so the boundaries between the, the tectonic plates into which the uh, earth crust is divided. And most of them are distributed in this arc, in what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire, where most of the active volcanoes in the world are, and also most of the um, earthquakes, uh, with a few exceptions, namely in the center of the Pacific, where we have what we call hot spots. But for the rest, the distribution of volcanoes is where um, plates converge or diverge.